kind of grittiness and authenticity that, that had never been seen before. Now my guts are out in that street every night. We're backing up out there! Dave, I want to make sure somebody back us up in here! Anytime you think I've stopped, pal, you just let me know. I had a kind of unofficial job as a story editor. They would uh, deliver each episode to my home and I would uh, read them and make notes and get back to them. I would keep them true if I could to the concept of police story, but still the decisions of how it finally went down were made by David Gerber, uh, Columbia Pictures Television, and uh, of course, NBC. David Gerber always understood the initial concept of police story. Even though he would have to do battle, sometimes daily, with NBC brass, and he would come back to us, the story editors, one of whom was Liam O'Brien and his nephew Ed Waters and Chris Morgan and Mark Rogers and Stanley Kalis, the producer, and myself. And he would call us the Irish Art Theater. And he would say, my life, I have to go to the network and fight these people for action, action, action. And then I come back here and I have to fight the Irish Art Theater who wants sensitivity and poetry in police drama, my life. Hold it, please! The police story pilot uh, was a huge critical success. In fact, the episodes that followed uh, were enormously uh, liked by the critics. We had the critics uh, in our corner from the beginning. But I think what really happened that was phenomenal is that 750,000 press agents out there in America, publicists carrying badges, told everyone they knew that this is the first television show about cops that's truly authentic. We had cops just singing our praises all over America. And those two things, the cops and the critics really made this show a success. I was watching you very carefully when you uh, walked back across the room. Uh, are you carrying a gun? <laughs> no. I had the idea that uh, policemen always carried their guns. Well, yeah, when I first started, you know, I'd carry a gun on duty, I'd carry it off duty, you know, I was really really gone ho but after I, I I began thinking it's it's dumb you know I mean it's heavy I think until police story came along television watchers had never considered anything past the cop uh, in a procedural sense doing the police work as far as going home with the cop and seeing that he was divorced three times because of what his job did to him in here um, that had never been dealt with before. Uh, we were presenting a show where cops were weeping, weeping, uh, because of something they'd encountered during the course of their duties. That hadn't been seen before. We presented cops who were brutal. We presented cops uh, warts and all. And that hadn't been done before in the way that we did it in police story in the 1970s. The first suspect acceded to Sergeant Lafrida's command. The second suspect raised his gun to a threatening position. Was he aiming at you or you? He was aiming at me. Why? Well, I was closer. What is all this, Chief? I'm trying to determine whether there was some good police work done or bad police work done here last night. We had an episode written by Robert Collins that directly dealt with the concept of police story from the beginning. It was called the Wyatt Earp Syndrome. 
It's something that I described to David Gerber and the other writers. It's, it's a time in the life of a young cop, some young cops, where their badge gets huge and the badge gets heavy and they start throwing their weight around and they even do it at home with their wives or their girlfriends or their children. And pretty soon they don't trust anybody. They don't trust their priest, their rabbi, their minister. They're prematurely cynical. All they trust is that badge and what they can do with it to show their authority. Robert Collins called it the Wyatt Earp syndrome because the real name for it around the LAPD was the John Wayne syndrome. And we tried to get permission from John Wayne and Batjack Productions to call it like it was, the John Wayne syndrome. And we could not get permission from them to do that. So uh, for fear of being sued by the Duke, <laughs> Robert Collins had to call it the Wyatt Earp syndrome for purposes of that episode, but it's terrific. That show absolutely directly deals with how the job acts on the cop. The last scene in that episode shows our young cop at home after he discovers that his wife has gone and he weeps, he weeps not quite understanding everything that's happened to him to get him to this point. And as he's weeping, we hear that stylized radio call. And it's just terrific. It's heartbreaking. I believe it was David Gerber who came up with the concept of the stylized radio calls opening each show, along with uh, Jerry Goldsmith's wonderful theme. It was a driving theme, and the radio calls uh, kind of mitigated it and yet made it more exciting. You, you kept wondering, what are these radio calls all about? And then they'd vanish and we're into the episode. Nevin Ray, 33, clear. Forty units on 15, stand by, 4 by 155, go ahead. CT-89, 3T-89, see the man traffic accident, 16. Boys, boys, I'm getting so lonely out here with no one to talk to. Then, at the conclusion of each episode, we'd get the radio calls again. And the viewer would say, aha, oh yes. It's, it was almost like the heartbeat of the cops, the radio calls. And it, it was just a very exciting idea, and it worked. T-89, 3T-89, see the Marin traffic accident, 60th Street and West Boulevard. Oh, yes, boys, boys, I'm getting so lonely out here with no one to talk to. Finally, after 14 years with the LAPD and uh, a couple of years with Police Story, things got to be too much for me. I uh, had written a third book while still a cop, and that book was nonfiction. It was a true crime story called The Onion Field, and that book became even a bigger bestseller. So now I was getting so much attention, I could not function anymore as a detective. Uh, people would make up crimes to come into uh, Hollenbeck Division police station and ask for me to solve them. And it was just embarrassing. Uh, my partners were being deluged with uh, fans and people wanting to talk to me for uh, ridiculous reasons, thinking I could get them a, a job on Police Story or something or other and still writing books, but you know what? I never stopped writing books the way we started it with Police Story. To this day, I get together with cops and I say, tell me stories, anything that enters your mind, just as we did on Police Story. 
and I take them to dinner and I buy them drinks. And with the male cops, it takes about three and a half drinks to get them to tell me good stories. Female cops are naturals and they're fearless and, and they can tell emotional stories, the stuff that I need. And I'm doing that this very night and I will probably always do it because, uh, you know, I love them, uh, but it's tough love, so it's okay. 